welcome back uh, class to our course uh, mechanical behavior of materials so in the last uh, lecture we completed the topic uh, of uh, precipitation strengthening and uh, dispersion hardening so today uh, we will start talking about solid solution strengthening which is uh, one of the another uh, type of mechanisms okay so we will talk about solid solution strengthening okay so now uh, if you remember when we were talking about uh, aluminum 4% copper uh, system uh, in precipitation strengthening right so we had this alpha phase if you remember the phase diagram we had this alpha phase which was single phase right okay and if you talk about aluminum 4% copper this alpha phase is actually a solid solution of copper in aluminum okay we had discussed this okay so you have copper which is solute and aluminum is solvent here okay so alpha phase is a solute solution now because of the presence of copper which is a solute the dislocation dislocation movement is going to be restricted okay and because of that you are going to see some amount of strengthening and since it is happening because of the formation of solute solution the whole phenomena is called solute solution strengthening again remember alpha is a solute solution okay of copper in aluminum now copper is restricting the movement of dislocation and that's why this whole phenomena the whole concept is called solute solution strengthening okay so strengthening due to the addition of solute atoms right this is called solid solution strengthening okay now if you remember the aging curve of uh, aluminum 4 weight percent copper i am using this example because we have discussed this before okay and if i draw the aging curve so you have hardness here and then aging time on the x axis right and if you remember the curve looked like something like this okay and at that time i mentioned that this particular point which corresponds to time t equal to 0 the strengthening you are getting from the alloy the contribution is coming from solid solution strengthening obviously you are going to have some lattice resistance right in the matrix but main contribution will be coming from solid solution strengthening so whatever hardness here say if i say hardness as h not the contribution towards h not will be coming from solid solution strengthening so some contribution of solid solution strengthening towards 
that's not okay and as you increase the aging time here so all these hardness in this range you have a contribution also from precipitates isn't it So at time t equal to zero, if you remember, the condition was S quench condition. So you had solid, uh, super saturated solid solution, right? So there you have a contribution from solid solution strengthening because you have lots of solutes because you have quenched it, isn't it? And as soon as you start aging, it precipitates form and then they will contribute towards precipitation strengthening. Okay, so realize the difference between solid solution strengthening and precipitation strengthening. In precipitation strengthening, you have contribution from precipitates. Okay, and in solid solution strengthening, you have contribution from the solutes present in the solid solution. Now again, realize that the solid solution, the crystal structure of the solvent remains same. So it doesn't change, right? Like in aluminum 4% copper, the alpha phase is also FCC like aluminum. Okay. But in precipitates, whenever we form precipitates like beta phase can have a different crystal structure than alpha. Okay. So Al2Cu, the precipitate you form in aluminum 4% copper, the equilibrium precipitate, the crystal structure is not FCC. Okay. So crystal structure of the precipitates can change. That is the difference, one of the differences between the solute and the precipitate. Solute is an atom, okay? And precipitates is a phase, phase. So there's a difference, okay? And remember in aging term, at time t equal to zero, you see a contribution from solid solution strengthening because you have not formed any precipitate yet. And after that, you start seeing the contribution from precipitation strengthening work, okay? Now, some of the examples, common examples for uh, solute solution. You know these examples already. So, brass, right? Then you have copper, nickel, and steel also. Right? Carbon. Carbon atom is a solute atom in iron. So, steel. So, you have lots of examples where you can see solid solution strengthening, okay? So this is the difference between solid solution strengthening and precipitation strengthening. So let's understand how the properties of the material changes when we add more number of solutes, okay? So if I plot stress versus strain, okay. So let's see, we have three plots. The first one is for pure metal. So this is for say, pure metal, okay? Now we are adding solute. So you can have another plot. Going to look something like this. Okay, so this is a solute of concentration C1. Okay, now let's draw another one. Okay, so you have solute. of concentration of C2, okay? So you can clearly see the difference between 
pure metal solute of concentration c1 and c2 where say concentration is increasing in this direction okay so c2 is higher than c1 concentration and what you see here that as you increase the solute concentration the strength increases and ductility slightly decreases okay you can clearly see so this is your tensile strength here okay somewhere here say okay so strength of the pure metal is the lowest and as you uh, start adding solutes you are going to get contribution from solute solution strengthening this solute atoms are going to restrict the movement of dislocations okay and thereby you are going to see the increment in the strength okay so what you can write here is that solid solution offers greater resistance to the dislocation motion then pure crystals okay you can see a pure crystal right so this is your pure, pure crystal in the red color here so pure metal it has lower strength than the other two solute solutions where one contain solute of c1 another one c2 now if i plot another plot where you are varying the concentration so let's see something like this so all these are qualitative huh? qualitative means schematic i am drawing and for different metals uh, for different uh, alloy system you are going to see different strength of or magnitude of strengthening okay? so you have say a was your pure metal and then you are adding b so weight percent of b here okay and here say i am drawing tensile strength and here we have elongation So if we see the above plot here, we can conclude that if you increase the concentration, if you go from C1 to C2 here in this direction, you are going to decrease the elongation and increase the strength, right? And pure metal is the lowest in terms of strength. So if I draw now, so this becomes your pure metal here, pure A. Now we are adding B, so your strength is going to increase, something like this. Okay. the trend line can be different for different alloy system but it is going to increase so say for uh, different concentration of b you are going to obtain different tensile strength something like this similarly uh, for pure a you are going to have a higher elongation and it is going to decrease as you increase the concentration of solute okay so overall what you see uh, here that uh, there is a change in tensile strength as well as elongation and this is happening because of solid solution strengthening okay so your strength is going to enhance because of the presence of solute atoms because they are going to restrict the movement of dislocations again i am reiterating the whole crux of this, this strengthening mechanism is that you have to somehow restrict the movement of the dislocation okay now let's uh, talk uh, about solute solution very quickly you already know about solute solution so solute solution so there are two types one is your uh, substitutional
solid solution. And another one is interstitial. Solid solution. Okay. So in substitutional solid solution, you are going to replace the solvent atoms by solute atoms, right? So solute atoms replaces replace solvent atoms. And in interstitial, solute atoms are going to occupy the interstitial positions or voids. Solute atoms will occupy interstitial positions. Say voids. Okay, so this is the difference between substitutional solid solution and interstitial solid solution. And if you again uh, let's talk about aluminum four percent copper, that is your substitutional solid solution. But if we talk, talk about steel, that becomes interstitial solid solution of carbon in iron because carbon grows in in the interstitials. Okay, in the iron lattice. And if you just uh, draw a very quick diagram of uh, these two. So if I have say atom A okay, so I'm drawing by hand. So, you know, the size of uh, all these atoms are not similar, but again, just learn the concepts. Suppose you have, let me draw another one for interstitial. Okay, so okay. So these are your say lattice of uh, a, so you have A atoms here. So the black one here is A atom. So A atom. Okay. Now, if it is substitutional, what we are going to do, we are going to replace some of the A atoms with, say, B atoms. Something like this. Okay. So this becomes your B atom. So this is the case of substitutional solid solution where B atoms, which is a solute, is going to replace the A atoms. So here, this is your solute and this is your, A is your solvent. Now, if the same situation is there with uh, the interstitial, let's A atom is same color and B atom is same color. So I can place here, B atom, something like this. Okay. So what is happening here? B atoms as a solute, they are going to sit into the interstitials. Okay. They are voids, interstitial voids. So they are going to sit there. So this is the case of interstitial solid solution. And here, this one is your substitutional. Solid solution.
and the example I already mentioned for substitution of solid solution, you have say copper in nickel. Okay, and in the stitial solid solution, the example steel that is carbon in iron. So, carbon is your solute atom, iron is your solvent, and copper here is your solute atom, and nickel is your uh, solvent. Okay. So here I have not uh, shown you any strain in the lattice and we are going to learn eventually that whenever you add solute atoms, you are going to see a strain in the lattice. Okay, so depending upon the size, you are going to see strain in the lattice. We will dis discuss it. For, for, now, uh, for now, I have just uh, uh, neglected the strains here. So you are not going to see any strain in the lattice. Now let's talk about something called distortion. So if you see here, right, depending upon the size of the B atoms, you can imagine, right, that there will be distortion in the lattice. Okay. So if the size of this B atoms here, right, is large, then you're going to see expansion in the lattice. You can force it, isn't it? Similarly, the size atom here in the substitutional case. Okay. If it is smaller and larger, there is going to be distortion in the lattice. So let's talk about distortion in the lattice due to cell solute atoms. Okay. So now let me again draw a nice uh, lattice with no distortion. Again, all these atoms should be of same size. I'll just draw one more line, one more row of atoms. Okay. So this is your solvent. And now let's put interstitial atoms at uh, say this position here. Let me mark it using black. So at this position, we are going to put say interstitial atom. And now since it interstitial, because of the interstitial atom, you are going to see distortion in the lattice. Okay. So I have now interstitial atom here. And now let's draw the same atoms what we had before. So you are going to see something like this. Okay, so something like this. So what you see that there is a distortion in the lattice. Okay, around this region, right? If you see here, I can draw a straight line like this, right? But here you are seeing a distortion as soon as you reach uh, around the interstitial atom. Right? So there is expansion in the lattice. Okay. Now this is interstitial. So I have shown here 
in the schematic here at the bottom, you can see unit cells, right? So this is FCC, page center cubic, you know this, and then this is BCC, okay? And you can see in FCC, both uh, tetrahedral as well as octahedral voids. So let me change the color, okay? So here, this one, this blue one is your octahedral voids. Okay. And then you can see a tetrahedron in the red color here. Isn't it this guy? In the red color. So this one. Okay. So this is a tetrahedron. So there is a void in the tetrahedron. We call it tetrahedral void. So this is for FCC, right? So you, uh, imagine that you have this blue atom. So this blue atoms, if I mark on the top A, right? And we are talking about this black atoms, which is a solute, say black atom is here, BA. Okay, and blue atom is A. So imagine that in FCC uh, lattice, you uh, the face centered atoms are also A, as well as the corners are A. That is how FCC is uh, made, right? So the B atoms, which is in black color, they are going to sit either in tetrahedral void or tetra, uh, uh, octahedral void. So this is either it is going to sit in octahedral here or in the tetrahedral void. Okay. Now in BCC also, you can see one tetrahedron here. See the dotted line. So you can see a tetrahedron. So there is a void in BCC also. Okay. So the interstitial atom, which is B in this case, can go and sit in the interstitial void, which is tetrahedron void here also, okay? So whether it is BCC or FCC, you are going to have some void, some interstitial positions, okay? And the solute atoms are going to sit in those octahedral or tetrahedral voids. And since this is sitting in octahedral or tetrahedral voids, the distortion, what you see here on the top. So this type of distortion is going to be non-symmetrical in nature. Okay. That means interstitial solute atoms have a non-spherical distortion field, okay, tetragonal or octahedral, okay. So the distortion you see is non-spherical type. Okay, because it is sitting in either tetragonal position or octahedral position. Okay, so this is the case of interstitial solid solution. Okay, so we have interstitial solid atom. So let me write here. So this is the case of interstitial solid solution. Now, if we come to uh, substitutional solid solution, let's see what happens. Substitutional solid solution. So let me quickly draw uh, the atoms for understanding. So I will have a atoms. Okay, so I'm not drawing again the uh, perfect lattice. So let's quickly draw if you have a substitutional atom which is smaller in size and substitutional atom which is larger in size. Okay. 
So what happens if the substitutional atoms is smaller in size? So you are going to see something like this, the structure. And then this line of atoms will be sitting here. Something like this. Okay. Okay, something like this. So what you see that this is here in this region, you have somewhat compressed the lattice, isn't it? So you have somewhat compressed compared to your previous lattice. Okay, if you have uh, uh, no solute atom present. Okay. Now, if I add a larger substitutional atom, so if you see here, if I start adding, uh, you know, larger substitutional atoms anywhere in this uh, A here, right, you are going to see expansion in the lattice. So you can imagine, right, if you have a smaller substitutional atom, you are going to have contraction in the lattice. And if you have a larger uh, solute atom, you are going to expand the lattice, isn't it? So here we are going to see expansion. So it is going to be something like this. Okay. And then you're going to have another set of atoms here. And then actually I have to make uh, much larger in size. So let me change, make it much larger. Okay. So now this guy here will move up. It will be something like this. Okay. And this atom will also move down. Okay. And then you have this situation. Okay. So what you see here, that there is a expansion in the lattice here. Okay, so this is your larger solute atom, larger substitutional atom, and this is smaller substitutional atom. Okay, so in both the cases, you see strain in the lattice, but in one case, there is a contraction, in another one, there is expansion of the lattice, right? So, and if you see, if you imagine it, this is going to be completely spherical distortion, right? Compared to the interstitial uh, solid solution where it was non spherical because the solute atoms were sitting in the tetrahedral or octahedral voids, okay? So in substitutional solid solution,
substitutional atoms have spherical distortion field okay so it will lead to spherical distortion and if you see here it is non spherical huh? interstitial so this is the difference between the strain associated with substitutional uh, atoms and interstitial atom in substitutional atom you have a spherical distortion in interstitial atom you have non spherical distortion and you know you are going to learn later that since the nature of distortion is different in interstitial and substitutional atoms the interaction with dislocations the way they are interacting with dislocations they are also going to be different for substitutional solid solution and interstitial solid solutions okay so i'll stop now and we we'll learn more uh, about substitutional solution in the next lecture thank you